Good soil management is really important for the rural economy. It's also important for our health and well-being. And finally, it's very important for the environment. In this video, we're going to be looking at making the case for soils from a land management perspective. My name is Hugh McClymont. I'm the research farm manager here at SRUC a Crichton Royal farm in Dumfries in southwest Scotland. Soil is very important to me as a livestock farmer. We need soil and how we manage the soil to get the optimum efficiency out of looking after our livestock. And that's either for grazing grass or growing good, strong, healthy crops to feed our animals. Compaction of the soil is a serious challenge to us all. That could be compaction from wheel traffic, but more importantly, it can be compaction from livestock and especially the size of the animals I have here, the weight of those animals, and that's where their hooves are actually compressing the soil and actually compressing it so it becomes a very dense matter. And that certainly then decreases the amount of activity in that soil from the microbes and the worms as such. So I have to manage my soil to minimize the amount of compaction. Another good indicator to me as a farmer on how I manage my farm is actually when I do look at my soil, if we're plowing, or even if I go out with a spade or I dig up some soil and I see a, ha a healthy worm activity, that is a very good indicator to me that I'm, I am managing my farm to the best of my ability. Worms make a big, big difference. The soil is very important to me personally. I love to have a very healthy farm. Healthy to me means I can see good, healthy grass crops and other uh, crops growing on the farm, but that is, all happens by good management and how you actually look after that, that soil. We're at Gilston Mains and I'm Edward Baxter. Gilston Mains is my farm here in Fife where my family have been for 150 years. We're standing in a field with leaven in the background and that's very appropriate because we're standing in a field of winter wheat. And we grew this crop for Diageo who have a big plant down at Cameron Bridge making whiskey. The wheat crop we've grown here took a lot of nutrients out of the soil. If we did that every year without replacing them, then over the years we would what's known as run the farm down. There are two parts to the process when we're harvesting a crop. One is that we need to maintain the carbon levels and we do that by chopping the straw and you'll see a lot of straw, chopped straw, lying around on the surface of this crop rather than going away in bales. The other thing we do is that we keep a very accurate measure of the amount of nutrients that's gone and we do this with a yield monitor on the combine that translates into information that we can take back to the office and we can set up application files in order to spread fertilizer spatially or differentially when it comes to the next crop. My name's Harriet Smith. I'm a land management advisor for Lot Lomond and the Trossex National Park Authority, based in Balloch, working with farmers and estate owners, land managers within the National Park. 55% of the land in the National Park, the land use is farming. So that soil is basically what those businesses are based on. Depending on the soil structure, the fertility of the soil, the plowability of the soil, basically dictates what those farming businesses, what type of enterprise they can operate. First thing we do is meet with the land manager, look at what they have on their holding, have a walk over the ground, look at their various businesses and their enterprises, how they can be integrated, look where there's opportunities for conservation, habitat networks through hedgerows, maybe creating some wading bird uh, habitat or black grouse if you're up on moorland. Um, and then we can bring in consultants to look into these in more detail. Hi, I'm Lucy Philby. I'm a specialist in SEPA's land unit in the southwest of Scotland. There's two parts to my job. One would be awareness raising and how people can reduce diffuse pollution, part of that with good soil management. Another part of it is visits to land managers, farmers, forestry areas and greenkeepers to discuss ways that they can better manage pollution risks on their pockets of land. So with a farmer, we would walk over the land, we would identify both areas of risk of pollution, but also where there's good practice happening. Good soil management is an important part of reducing diffuse pollution from rural land. Somebody looking after their soils means that they're keeping nutrients in the right place in the fields and they're not being washed off into water courses and causing pollution in river systems. And it also helps to prevent flooding and mitigate climate change. Mm -hmm.